college football rankings for week three. Let's get right to it, folks. Georgia remains number one. As I've always said, you got to beat the best to be the best. And until they lose, I have to respect them as two-time champions and keep them at number one. Now, they didn't play that well. Home game against South Carolina, another SEC opponent. And Beck, the quarterback, just looked like a zombie out there. No emotion, no energy. He actually looked kind of scared to me. And it was more like he wasn't carrying the team, but he was riding on the shoulders of all those five stars. You saw how they won. They came out in the second half, and Kirby Smart went to the offensive coordinator and told him, the kid can't get it done under the pressure. Take the pressure off of him. So it was a lot of zero flat passes to the wide receivers and to the backs. A couple of passes, 10 yards or so downfield on crossing routes, and that was about it. He really didn't show any leadership or dominance, as I said before, they will lose at some point when they get up against a team that has enough talent on both sides of the ball and a quarterback that is not afraid to sling it around. Now, South Carolina, they had the quarterback. They just didn't have enough talent around him to be able to take Georgia down. But it's coming, folks. Trust me. Number two, USC. They stay at number two because they were idle. Didn't do much, can't really knock them. They stay right where they are. A close number two to the number one. Very close. I wanna say thank you to all the subscribers out there. I really appreciate you, and I really appreciate all the comments. Now, I hope you're out there winning. I hope you're having fun. To all of you who haven't subscribed, please hit the like, subscribe, and share button. It will greatly help us. It'll help with the growth and it'll help us continue making this content. Please leave comments, but just keep them clean so that we're all on the same page. Thank you. So then we move on to our third slot. Ohio State remains at number three. Ryan Day had them revved up and rolling yesterday. The offense, they just look just like I expected. Quarterback slinging it. He looks energized. He looks focused. He looks like he knows he's behind the wheel of an awesome machine. And he's not messing it up. He's spreading it around to everybody. The offensive coordinator is spreading the field. They're going deep. They're running. They're running reverses, gadgets, sweeps. I mean, he has that offense moving. They stay at number three. Number four is where you get your first shakeup in my rankings. We're going to move Penn State up to number four. They went on a road against the Illini, Illinois, and gave them a spanking. Yes, the quarterback there, he looks solid. James Franklin, he looks in control. He looks like he's building something slowly. Strong foundation. The team is building. They're not coming out the gate putting up 50, 60, thinking that they're all that. But they're building it week in and week out. The tight ends, then the running backs, then the receivers. Combination of everything. They're building to a crescendo. They're about to have a super big blowout game coming. You can feel it when they put it all together. Number five. FSU, Florida State, falls to number five. They had a lackluster performance against Boston College. Not really sure what was going on there, but the emotion, the drive, the passion, it just wasn't there from before. Now, you don't know if success did that to them or if the opponent did it or if it was a combination. Either way, they just didn't look that good, so I dropped them to number five. Number six, Texas. They fall as well. Just didn't look that good. 
offense struggled. The offensive coordinator had no way of switching up the game plan to, to move the ball around the field. Ewers, he did his best at quarterback there, but he, he just wasn't on point. The defense was in his face a lot. Maybe success got to them as well after beating Alabama the week before. So they fall with a lackluster performance as well. Number seven, Michigan. They stay right where they are. Just because they had a good win, I'm not getting off my original statement. They are a team that can't handle success. And I'm just waiting for the shoe to drop on the other foot. They're going to come crashing down with a horrific loss. You'll see. It's coming. Number eight, we'll leave Washington right where they are. They had a really good win, but it was against Michigan State. And we all know that they have coach troubles, internal conflict going on with some issues off the field. So we, we're not going to really count that as a, as a strong win because the team really had no leadership behind the interim and a, a coordinator trying to hold down the reins. Team is in flux. They're not moving in my book. Number nine, Notre Dame. They didn't impress either. A decent win against really nobody. So they only really did what they were supposed to do. No big deal. Give Notre Dame their props. They stay at number nine. And the last, and number 10, more shakeup in my top 10. We're going to move Oregon into the top 10. And they get there from a high-powered offense. Bo Nix moved that ball around. Oregon put up the points. And they were playing against a pretty high-powered offense. I know Hawaii doesn't get a lot of hoopla in the national rankings, but they can score points. They held them down defensively. And Oregon got after them on the scoreboard. So there's my top 10. Georgia number one. USC number two. Ohio State number three. Penn State number four. Florida State number five. Texas number six. Michigan number seven. Washington number eight. Notre Dame number nine. And Oregon 10th. 